Hi, welcome to another edition of Calculus 2. Today we are going to talk about the integral test and P series. Let's go ahead and take a look at this interesting topic. So we started talking about uh, sequences and then we said a series is uh, some of the elements of a sequence. Uh, for the first uh, type of series that we looked at, geometric series, we could easily sum it up and figure out if it converges or diverges. But that is rather uh, unusual for us to be able to actually find out the exact uh, value of a series. What we have in mind now is to uh, find uh, some approximations for the sum of a series and methods for figuring out if the series actually converges or diverges. We are going to have a long list of variety of tests that will inform us about these properties and uh, perhaps the easiest one of them is the so-called uh, integral test yeah, and based on that we are going to have the p-series test as well. So. Let's, for example, take a look at a, a series here. Sum of 1 over n squared plus 1 from 1 to infinity. There's another area of mathematics we come across uh, summations, and that's when we were doing integrals. Integrals were actually summation of the area of rectangles under the graph of a function. So it's not surprising that two of these things go hand in hand. When I want to investigate uh, some of a series, I might as well investigate the area of the uh, curve under, uh, for a function that matches the terms of the series. So if it is possible for us to find a function that matches the elements of this uh, series, we, are, we have uh, an advantage in actually attacking the series and finding some information about it. So, to study if this series converges or diverges, we might as well study if this integral converges or diverges. We have looked at these integrals under so-called improper integrals, so perhaps you want to take a look at that and see uh, what's the effect of having infinity as one of the boundaries. But uh, the idea is essentially very intuitive. So the requirement for doing this match is that if you have terms of your uh, sequence as a n, then you have to uh, look at the function that matches that. That is a sub n has to be f of n. So this function 1 over x squared, of course if I put x to be some uh, whole number n, and this would be the same as that. In addition, we are going to require certain basic properties of this function for our comparison to work easily. The function has to be positive, continuous, and decreasing uh, for our uh, approximation to work. Let's go ahead and see. If I'm adding uh, the terms of this series, so for example, I go at n equal to 1, I get 1 over 1 squared plus 1, that's 1 half. If n is equal to 2, that's going to be 1 fifth. If n is 3, that's going to be 1 tenth, and so on. So these are uh, some heights I have in mind, and I might as well graph them. So this is at n equal to 1, I'm at this location. At n equal to 2, I'm at this location. At n equal to 3, at this location, and so on. At n equal to 4, will be down here, almost close to horizontal axis. So the function that matches this uh, terms of the series is 1 over x squared plus 1. That would be this blue line that goes through these points of the series. Now how do we compare one against the other one? We are going to make rectangles and the rectangles are going to help us to compare areas. So if this height is the first term of the series a1, if I make a rectangle out of it, the area of this rectangle is going to be the base of it, which is 1, times the height of it, which is a sub 1. And so the area is actually the same as the first term of the series. So when n is equal to 1, 1 half, the term is 1 half. 
Well, the area of this uh, rectangle is also one half. At n equal to 2, the height becomes one fifth. That's one fifth. The uh, area of this uh, rectangle is also one fifth. And so on. Uh, here is at n equal to 3, the height of the, uh, the uh, term in the series is one tenth. The area of this rectangle is also one tenth. We see that uh, the sum of these uh, yellow rectangles is more than the area underneath the curve. So if I add up A1, A2, and A3, the first three terms, it's going to be more than the area under the graph of f of x from 1 to 4. Okay, I'm going up to 4 here, but I add up the first three terms of the series. So sum of a1, a2, a3 is more than area from 1 to 4 of f of x dx. On the other hand, if I come ahead and build the rectangles underneath the curve, so here I'm making these blue rectangles. First one of them is at the second term of the series A2. The next one is A3. The next one is A4 and so on. These are all sitting below the graph. So some of the area of these uh, rectangles is going to be less than the area under the curve. So area from 1 to 4 underneath the curve is going to be more than the sum of these blue areas, so it's going to be more than A2, A3, and A4 combined. In the same manner, I can make more rectangles. I can go up to 10 or 100 or up to N. And then I'll have the following. The area under the graph of a function is going to be from 1 to N is going to be less than sum of all the elements of the series from 1 to n minus 1. We are missing the last term here. And it's more than, we skip the very first, uh, start from a2, go all the way to a n. We can rearrange this thing and say, for example, <coughs> this uh, area of uh, under the curve if I add a n to it, I'm adding a n to both sides of this. So that uh, sum is less than the partial sum from 1 through n. And if I add a 1 to both sides, a 1 through a n again is this term, and that sum is less than a 1 plus the integral from 1 to n of f of x dx. Okay, what does this tell us? A couple of things. One is that if I want to investigate the partial sum, I can do it through these integrals. That tells us one way of coming up with an estimation for the partial sum. Second term, if the integral diverges, meaning when n goes to infinity, if this integral diverges, then we know that the series will diverge. If the integral converges, then we know that the series is going to converge. So the two of them go in hand in hand. If one converges, so does the other one. If one diverges, so does the other one. The only thing that we need to be uh, careful about is to make sure that the function we have chosen shows these three properties, that it is positive, continuous, and decreasing. Typically, you don't have much of a challenge to show that it is positive and continuous. Typically, it comes from the problem immediately. When it comes to decreasing, uh, how do we figure out if a function is decreasing? Remember from Calculus 1, we had a standard method for establishing that the function is decreasing. Let me see if you can pause for a second and tell me how would you tell if a function is a decreasing function. Did you remember uh, what you do? Of course, if you have a function uh, increasing versus decreasing, increasing matches the property that the derivative is positive, and decreasing matches the property that the function uh, has a negative derivative. 
So in addition to these properties, first of all, you want to have the function to be differentiable and it should be easy for you to tell if you are in an increasing range or you are in a decreasing range. One additional remark for making this type of a comparison, uh, the uh, comparison should hold from some place on. Uh, sometimes a very first few terms might not be a good match, but uh, uh, down the road at the tail of the uh, series, the matching uh, might be exactly what you want. We are going to see some examples of these things in the uh, problems that we are going to do. Let's go ahead, uh, for example, uh, let's take uh, problem. Yeah. The idea is to apply integral test to find out if the following uh, series diverges or converges. So suppose we have uh, the following. Sum of n from 1 to infinity of 5 divided by 3n plus 1. So what uh, sequence are we talking about? This would be 5 divided, first term is going to be 4, next time uh, is uh, the 7, and the next one is 10, and so on we go. The question is, would this sum converge or diverge? We might even want more uh, information if it diverges, uh, for example, at what point does it exceed 100 or 1000 or something like that. All of that can be obtained, uh, of course, in an approximate fashion by the integral test we have. So here we say, okay, the, the matching function uh, is rather obvious, it's 5 over 3x plus 1. So if the function that you have here is uh, one of those basic functions you see in calculus, uh, the conversion from n to x is immediate. Next, is this uh, a legitimate function for us to consider? Well, uh, legitimate meaning is it positive, continuous, decreasing, and in addition to that, it would be nice if it is differentiable. Well, it's obviously uh, uh, it's a continuous function, it's differentiable and everything. All we need to check is that it is a decreasing function. Uh, if it was uh, <coughs> fluctuating and such, our comparison would not work easily because our uh, rectangles would not simply sit underneath the, uh, the graph or, or uniformly above the graph when you have a hard time com making a comparison. So as a check to see if my function is decreasing or not, I take a derivative. Of course, here derivative of numerator times denominator is 0, minus derivative of denominator, which is 3, times numerator is 5, over 3x plus 1. Well, that's obviously a negative uh, quantity, wherever it exists. It definitely exists. Uh, for positive x's and it is a negative quantity. So this is a decreasing function. So this tells me the f that I want to use, f is decreasing uh, and therefore I can compare this series to this integral, to integral from 1 to infinity of 5 over 3x plus 1 dx. Okay, now we have delegated the problem to uh, an integration problem. And then we have to go to our uh, toolboxes for integration, uh, figure out how to do the integral. We have learned uh, all sorts of ways of integrating function. And typically, this is not a very challenging step of these problems. In this case, you notice that. Uh, well, it, 
we might as well start with the indefinite integral 5 over 3x plus 1 dx by a simple u substitution we are going to be done with this problem if u is 3x plus 1 then du is 3 dx and therefore dx is simply one third of du our integral becomes 5 over u this is du over 3 so it becomes 5 third of logarithm of absolute value of u plus a constant so that is 5 third of logarithm of the value of the function for me is positive so I don't need the absolute value is 3x plus 1 plus a constant okay so that is how to do the indefinite integral then we come to this issue you remember for improper integrals uh, the idea was that we would calculate the uh, integral up to certain variable quantity and then let that quantity go to infinity so the standard approach was to calculate the integral from 1 to b of 5 over 3x plus 1 dx so that meant to take this answer 5 third of logarithm of x plus 1 and evaluate it between these two limits and see that this is 5 third of logarithm of this is b plus 1 and then minus 5 third of logarithm of 2 then the integral from 1 to infinity is the limit of this when b goes to infinity well when b goes to infinity this logarithm of infinity will be infinity this whole thing becomes infinity and that integral is going to be infinite so in, in short if you just have a logarithm of x or an expression similar to that then the integral uh, ends up being infinity so what does that imply for us if the integral becomes infinite the sum will also become infinite and therefore we can say that the, the series diverges so what does it mean in this case <clears throat> this is a case that we have uh, area under the curve we have established that to be infinite and now we are saying well sum of all of these a's is going to be even more than what is the area under the the curve therefore the sum also goes to infinity okay, let me show you also in the context of uh, a, a demo that's a little bit cleaner than uh, the pictures I have drawn so here's a a simple demo uh, the function is a bit different but uh, just to keep it simple I have it like 1 over x plus 1 it can be any function you have in mind so the graph of this function is this uh, uh, orange color line or orange brown color that you see here okay the area under this we have established to be infinity that's the our, our integration shows that the area is infinity we can show our series by these green rectangles the area of each of these rectangles is, is equal to one of the terms of the series so the sum of the series is going to be this uh, area underneath this kind of stair step looking curve well that area is whatever it is is more than the area underneath the curve and since the area underneath the curve is infinity the area under this green portion has to be infinity as well so that is how to establish if something uh, is divergent you can also use this to find out approximately how many terms of the series does it take for the sum to be more than some given number suppose I ask you how many terms do I have to add to be sure that uh, the sum is more than say 500 well you can use the integral test to give an estimation for that answer 
let's go ahead and look at uh, some problem with a bit uh, more flavor let's uh, look at uh, another one here's another question from your textbook uh, it says investigate the following uh, series for convergence or divergence so for example it says uh, I have the following series logarithm of 2 over 2 plus logarithm of 3 over 3 and logarithm of 4 over 4 you might be wondering why I didn't put logarithm of 1 over 1 but well logarithm of 1 is 0 if you wish to put it uh, that uh, doesn't change anything because this is you remember that's 0 so if you want for nicety's sake to add that as well that's fine so the question is uh, does uh, use integral test to determine if this converges or diverges so use integral test to determine if the corresponding series if the series converges or diverges so in this case uh, the formula for the term of the series is not given to you but uh, in this case it's rather obvious what is intended here what is intended of course it's by, by consensus that we say we are calculating logarithm of n over n now again if you want to start at 1 or you want to start at 2 yeah, it doesn't make any difference here uh, and in general uh, adding or removing a first few terms of a series has no uh, influence on the issue of convergence or divergence so you are always free to set aside any first uh, beginning few numbers of the series if you wish okay so uh, to keep everything looking nice like previously let's say from 1 to infinity we are investigating this well it's easy to match this against the function because all of these is have the corresponding uh, function from calculus uh, in this case it's going to be just logarithm of x over x so these two meaning the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x in this case logarithm of x over x dx this is going to have same fate as this one if this converges that one will converge if this one diverges well that one will diverge now logarithm of n over n is not as simple as say uh, geometric series for us to go add it up so this is a, a kind of a comparison we are using against something that's more familiar hopefully for us and hopefully this will shed some light on what's going to happen in this case so uh, well logarithm of x over x what do we do in that case uh, let's go ahead investigate uh, this logarithm of x over x this is a problem you have seen in calculus 1 and perhaps uh, recently again uh, in the context of techniques of integration uh, substitute simple substitution will do the job here because if you take u to be logarithm of x then du is simply just 1 over x dx and our integral simply becomes logarithm of u uh, okay so uh, excuse me uh, see. so this becomes uh, this is u and uh, dx over uh, x is just du antiderivative of that is of course just uh, excuse me again antiderivative of that is u squared over 2 plus c so integral of logarithm of x over x dx is simply logarithm of x squared over 2 plus a constant now if I'm going to calculate area from 1 to infinity I have to plug 1 and infinity in this and subtract them from each other what was our procedure for improper integrals 
we say limit of logarithm of now if we put a b here or anything else you wish logarithm b squared over 2 as b goes to infinity well as b goes to infinity this quantity is going to be infinite and our integral simply going to go to infinity what does that imply it implies that this sum is also going to go to infinity and as a result we are going to declare this thing as a divergent series uh, again a side problem here would be okay if it is divergent it means it's going to exceed any number that you set for example I might ask at what point would it exceed at what point would the sum exceed 1000 or at what point does the sum exceed 10,000 and such so we can use this estimation here to get a guess where the crossover is going to happen and uh, so on so uh, we see a variety of uh, problems here let's go do another test uh, suppose the question is what is the fate of the following series 1 over 2n plus 3 cubed and running from some starting number to infinity so we say this goes hand in hand with integral of 1 over 2x plus 3 uh, uh, cubed before we go here let me see I forgot one thing uh, to establish uh, when we do this uh, test integral test uh, there is one thing we need to check is that our, uh, uh, our function is decreasing and the easiest uh, the most common way of doing that is to show that its derivative is negative and I forgot to include that in this step so let me just uh, put it here what's the derivative of logarithm of x over x so that expression when you convert it to the continuous variable x we go and check that its derivative has to be negative for, for it to be a valid check so in this case it's easy derivative of numerator is 1 over x times denominator that is just 1 minus derivative of denominator is 1 times numerator that's logarithm of x over denominator squared okay what is the fate of the numerator at x equal to 1 this is positive but at x equal to 2 this starts being negative and stays negative uh, like that so we uh, so we say uh, this quantity is negative for x's that are larger than okay so x well let's go ahead set the numerator of this thing equal to 0 we see that logarithm of x has to be equal to 1 so x has to be equal to e up to e this numerator is positive after that it's going to become negative so for x what is e remember e is 2.7 uh, 2 1 and so on so definitely for x is that equal to larger than 3 this expression is negative so even though at the very beginning for a short time this derivative is positive it quickly turns into negative and stays like that and we said the first few cases yeah, it does not matter for our uh, testing it's the tail of the sequence that is important for us so for x is larger than or equal to 3 the derivative is negative and our test is valid let's go ahead uh, do the following test here so again I do a u substitution integration is from 1 to infinity uh, I take u to be 2x plus 3 so du is 2dx 
therefore dx is du over 2 the integral from for this function 2x plus 3 cubed dx turns out to be uh, 1 over u cubed times du over 2 so that's one half of the integral of u to power of minus 3 du integral of that is one half u to power of minus 2 over minus 2 plus a constant in short that is going to be one minus one fourth of uh, u squared plus a constant so integral from 1 over 2x plus 3 to the power of infinity is going to be minus 1 fourth of 2x plus 3 squared if I want to calculate the integral from 1 and stop at some location B this is going to be 1 over 2x plus 3 cubed is equal to we go ahead and calculate this between 1 and B so I plug B in this thing becomes 1 over minus 4 times 2x plus B excuse me 2b plus 3 squared then minus 1 over minus 4 of x now is 1 so it becomes 2 times 1 plus 3 squared cleaning this up I can put the factor of 1 fourth outside this becomes 1 over 5 squared and this is 1 over 2b plus 3 squared now what happens when b goes to infinity when b goes to infinity this fraction goes to 0 we are left with just this term we can use it to approximate the sum but right now all that we care about is that uh, so we have the following conclusion 1 through infinity of 1 over 2x plus 3 cubed is convergent is a convergent integral because it actually converges to 1 over 5 squared so that's about that's actually 1 over 100 so we have established that the integral converges and therefore we can conclude that this in series converges not only that we can compare it against the value of that uh, integral and get an approximation for what this thing is okay uh, one of the most important uh, series whose convergence or divergence can be established in this fashion is the so-called P series P series simply refers to the following 1 over 1 to power of p plus 1 over 2 to the power of p 1 over 3 to power of p and so on so in short this is 1 over n to the power p added up from 1 to infinity using the above test we can show easily that if p is larger than 1 this p series converges you simply compare it against the integral of 1 over x to the power of p if p is less than or equal to 1 then the p series diverges so for example 1 over 1 cubed plus 1 over 2 cubed plus 1 over 3 cubed and so on this one converges actually very similar to what we just did very similar to this a slight uh, difference in the term that we have over there but if p is less than or equal to 1 well p equal to 1 would be harmonic series we looked at last time p less than 1 for example an example of that 
would be power one half which you can convert it to radical if you wish one over radical three and so on this one uh, diverges it goes to actually infinity okay this is going to be uh, uh, this result is going to be one of the very important ones we are going to use uh, in checking uh, many series from here onward that's going to give us a tool that's going to be faster than uh, what we have here the integral test takes a little bit of time because you have to apply the integration and such but we are going to see in the next uh, lectures and such p series gives us a faster way of coming up with a conclusion at the expense that it's not going to give us an easy way to uh, actually get an estimation just quick uh, verdict as to the series converges or not but that's about it that just to indicate how important this uh, p series is let me show you some of the articles online uh, there is a very famous uh, function in mathematics uh, perhaps the in some sense the most uh, famous question in mathematics revolves around uh, this particular function uh, the terminology is a little bit different instead of that power p we had before is a power is indicated by s and the whole series is given a name it's called a Riemann zeta function a Riemann is a German mathematician and zeta was just so a letter of alphabet Greek alphabet which is shown is like this uh, so uh, quite a bit of mathematical re research has gone into investigating the properties of this particular function is a whole area of mathematics uh, occupying many many books and conjectures and so on so what we are touching on right now is uh, has uh, some connection to that issue too but you're going to see that in more advanced classes in uh, future years hopefully okay I stop here uh, look for more exercises related to this section uh, try to uh, uh, line up your reasoning whenever you are uh, applying the integral test make sure that you do not skip the section that you need to show that your function is actually decreasing in, ca in this case actually I, I forgot it myself to uh, in this case is rather obvious that the function that we are looking at is a decreasing function but just to emphasize that we need to show this thing formally 2x plus 3q well what is f prime if f prime is negative then I know my function is decreasing in this case it's rather obvious that numerator increases with x and therefore the fraction is going to decrease but just to be um, complete uh, here maybe the best thing to do is to write this thing in the terms of power so its derivative is going to be the exponent which is minus 3 times the derivative of the base which is 2 times 2x plus 3 and then we have to decrease this exponent so it becomes minus 4 and if you want to write it nicely it becomes minus 6 over 2x plus 3 to power of 4 well, this expression is always negative whenever it exists is negative so we are done that the function f of x that we are using f of x is decreasing uh, and of course again in this case we could easily see that uh, at the start that it is actually a decreasing function but just uh, make sure you make a mention of it that uh, you, you have tested your function to be decreasing and then your test will be uh, solid okay until next time good luck and god bless